So let's break down this look. Is we're gonna do this, this wave look and I have this head ready to go. There's also a very interesting, um, you can see that section two goes under and then this comes down over it. And this actually sits over the bun in the back. And you can kind of see it in this look here where it's coming down and it's kind of going over the bun. In these sleeker looks, they take more time. So let's break down the sections. Section one is the very, very top. You can see the uh, curls in the photo down on the bottom right. Section two and three are the sides. Now I am going deep into section four, which is always the crown. Your sections are always the same. So here is my hand holding section four, the crown. And then that's gonna help me find section two on the other side or section three. Two and three are the sides. And in the very, very back is section five. So I always work with the same sections. Now my Wilson cream and gel combo is perfect for these smooth, sleek looks. Start with a very low, tight ponytail and to really tighten it up even more, I like to wrap it with one of these bands. But I do like to use a normal ponytail first. It can be a little awkward wrapping with a um, that right from the beginning. So getting the section set up, I'm gonna do three rows of curls here in the crown. I'm dragging a little. This is a modern look, not vintage. So I'm not going through pop on the top there. I'm going for just a little drag. And then you certainly want to continue to be smooth and clean and let those curls cool. I'm gonna do two more curls. You can see I am pulling the hair slightly back. That is also just going to maintain that flat front that Amanda has, which is more modern and not as much vintage. We are going for a nod to vintage, but not a full on vintage look. Slight touches will, will bring the difference to have a sleek Hollywood look as opposed to you know, a costumey vintage look. So these are the details that are important if that matters to you. Now here in section four, which lays over, I am going to get some curl in here. And as well, I am dragging the top curl. I am not going for height because the top of her head is flat. What we really want to get with all these curls is a gorgeous wave. And when the curls are brushed later on and laying on top of what's happening in section five on the bottom, you will see a beautiful wave is so easy to get. Now, I also hope that you will enjoy seeing how I work in sections and that the updo system that I've created will really help you not get lost in hairstyle, will help you how to have these beautiful detailed looks and keep you from getting um, confused or messy. All these steps work towards the system. So finishing up with the last curl here and getting that pinned. And you will see throughout the updo how I keep my sections separated. Now the sides are going to just simply go back tight and pin into that section five in the back. It's not a hard look. It has steps, but they are sequential and neat and easy to follow. It's just the execution of keeping the look smooth, clean, using the wool, which has a little bit more water in it that I like for these clean looks and just keeping it neat as you go. And that's what happens is so many times people wanna know how to make the look neater while it's a little late after it's all put together. So it's a matter of following the system 
and cleaning as you go. And so just going to pin this and you notice it's flat. Lots of times you'll see me put ponytails in these, but here I want it flat. So there's no ponytail. There's rows of pins to keep it nice and flat. So there we go. Now we're going to take the curling iron and I'm going to shape curls down here because in a sense, this is a foundation. This is a foundation for all the rest of the hairstyle coming down to live on top. So we do want some directional curl on the sides because that'll show on the nape of the neck, but you will also see how I grab a piece of padding, which I do not use, but just to show you if you needed to, you could. Now Amanda's hair in the video, she has a lot more hair. So this head does not have as much hair. So you don't always have to have a lot of hair for these looks. And in my other courses and videos, there are tricks for hiding too much hair. You don't want to use all the hair sometimes because then the hairstyle is too big. So back here, if she did have a lot of hair, you simply could almost just braid this whole thing and wrap it in a bun and drop the curls down on top. But because we don't have the length that Amanda has, we are going to work and make some design with these curls. Now I have a piece of the ponytail and a piece of section one on the left side. Section two is the right side. Just teasing these to make them come together and just gonna form some rolls, some basic barrel curl rolls down here and getting that just so it looks beautiful from the side and from the neck. A couple of hairpins that help hold it in place. And again, every section is secure and clean and neat before I move on. Getting hair up out of the way so that I can work on the hair that I want to work on. And it's just, again, grabbing a piece of that ponytail, grabbing the side from section two, and getting some foundational fullness for the rest of the design to sit on top. You can notice that picture there of Amanda on the right. There's a little bit of curl showing behind her ear and I wanna maintain that just so that something is going on on her neck back here and just continuing to build that foundation. So my last curl on the bottom and then there's one more curl on top, rolling that in. The tease and the spray really helps make it so much fatter when you don't have enough hair. And bringing that around to create just a pretty little look there in the bottom. So with this last piece, if you wanted to or needed to, you could add in some hair padding. But I don't do that. And show you how I'm creating the shape that is similar to the photo. So I'm just going to, you know, try to decide, do I want to make a wave there? No, I have so much hair above that's coming down I don't want to get into too many details too early. I'm going to continue with building this up and making that shape in the back so that when the design comes down from the crown, it has a beautiful resting place because it's an overall shape that is important in the internal construction. So now the crown section four is going to come down just looking and brushing it all together, looking at my waves, just beautiful, super easy to do, looking at how it sits on top. And in order to get that look that it's sitting on top, I'm gonna split it diagonally. So one side will come down on one side and the other side will come down on the other side. And that just creates a look, you know, close to what the photo is and it just helps um, 
balance out the back. So now I've switched to a dry working spray, which is from Paul Joseph, and very little water in this spray because this is the top layer and I want it to be uh, smooth and sculptural and just dropping it down now on top of section five, which is always the bottom. So not every look is gonna be the exact same. It might have the same steps, the same process, but your hair, your head shape, your length, your density is all going to be different. So don't get too caught up on, you know, copying the look. I really want you to just grasp the steps and the system, which will help all of your individual looks flow, be cleaner and be strategic and repeatable. That is the purpose of the updo system. And I hope you do visit updosystem.com where I have full length training videos and all the information to, you know, hire me for a Zoom class for your school or for your team. And I will just sit right there and work with you guys. And I love to work with students and professionals um, just to help you get better and clear and just feel confident. I just want a level of confidence. So this beautiful color just helps you see the look. I'm spreading out the underneath part of section four, trying to decide where it's going to go, where it's going to live, and pinning it right into that beautiful foundation. And the last section that we need to work on will be section one bringing these down brushing it out and playing with it using my dry spray here keeping it nice and clean pushing that curl in it's always there you might feel like you lost it where'd it go but you know on a real client their density Certainly Amanda's hair, is, it's much finer than a mannequin head, and you might get a little bit more bend on a real head of hair. Um, using your clips, make sure they're smooth with no ridges, and just going to have them hold my wave into place while I can organize pinning in the back. And then I will show you tricks for pinning into the wave so that it will stay. I know a lot of looks are done, you know, with Pinterest and Instagram pictures in mind, but I really want to teach you how looks will stay in for a real client. So there is the wave in its final shape, and I'm going to pin where those clips are and hide it. Let's get this little tail Tucked in, keeping it clean, and pinning it inside and not flat across. I don't like it when pin curls are pinned flat across. It, it loses the dimension, and you can see the pins. Um, but right here, I just want to put a pin in, and my finger is there. I'm going to feel it. Go underneath, grab a little of the wave, and tuck it down. And also using that hairpin to hide it and the hairpin just to tuck that wave into the head shape. So my final act spray is really good for getting those waves to stay. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in a class.